In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Good people, I'm sure you are well. It is Monday, the 14th day of February, in the year of our Lord and Saviour, 2022. It is Valentine's Day. So, dear good people, happy Valentine's. I know today there will be a lot of acts of compassion and so many gifts will be exchanging hands. That is okay. Allow me to speak to you as a Christian and also hoping that you are Christians. And then maybe share with you how a Christian should be able to, to show love. The best way a Christian shows love. I am not disputing what you will be doing maybe this day or tomorrow or any other day. But I'm only sharing with you my ideas of how I think a Christian should show that genuine love. It is good to receive flowers. It is good to receive gifts. It is gift to be taken out for dinner or even lunch. It is good to share all types of goodies. It is good. But if you ask me, it is even much better if we can do something more. Something more like what? Like, number one, practicing forgiveness. Did you know that today, among the many people who will not receive flowers, who will not be taken out for dinner or lunch, who will not even take themselves out, who will not even fight the value or taste of this day, will be because of lack of forgiveness. Will be because of the wound that is in their heart. Will be the amount of pain that they carry every new day will be the amount and the depth of bitterness that they have carried over the years or the months or, if you like, days. One of the red flags that we are not doing very well as Christians is when we struggle to forgive. I know you have heard this statement. So and so really hurt me so bad. I will never forgive that person. So and so did this. I will never forgive the person. I said, and I have always said that, it is true, forgiveness has its own time. But saying that you will never forgive, that is like putting yourself in a certain jail. And there is nobody who can release you from that jail unless you yourself make a decision to get out of that jail. On Saturday, I was with some gracious women that we were learning about faith, Catholic Women Association, in one of the parishes in the Archdiocese of Nairobi in the country Kenya in Africa. And uh, I remember we were sharing some jokes about Valentine's. And I told them that uh, because of the pain sometimes we go through, sometimes we opt to remain uh, closed in our rooms and remain there. And I told them, no. One of the ways that you must celebrate Valentine's is to find in your heart somebody you can forgive. And if you have not enjoyed life for some time, take yourself out. If there is one gift that you give yourself or you gift yourself, especially if you're in this category of people who are completely heartbroken, please make sure that you treat yourself well. 
Remember you are the only person who can treat you the way you would want to be treated. Because maybe I would give you a gift, a gift of this nature, but maybe you have so many of those gifts. Maybe I would give you some flowers. Maybe the type of flowers that I gave you are not the flowers you would have really loved. I work with the students and I tell students that uh, the only person who can write the most appropriate message in the success card is the student himself or herself because they are the ones who know their capacities. For us, we may be talking about flying colors. Maybe the fellow has all along been talking about crowding colors. <laughs> Whatever. So, what, do I, what, do I, what am I saying? I'm saying something very simple. If you are still down because of the pain, and maybe even somebody is willing to treat you, but you don't want because you are your heart, give yourself a gift, not flowers, not anything tactile. Forgive that person. That will be the best gift that you give to yourself. Number two, and I like it so much, practicing self-awareness or soul checking. Practicing self-awareness or soul checking. Coming Sunday, the seventh Sunday in ordinary time, Jesus will remind us about loving our enemies. And part of the reflections that we'll hear from the church is about understanding the people we call enemies. And one of the things that we will hear on Sunday is that some of the people we consider as enemies could be people who are in more danger than we are. People who could be hurting than we are hurting. But because the person is my trans transgressor, I feel that I'm so offended. But maybe I have never taken time to think about the emotional status of the person who hurt me. That maybe even as they hurt me, they were doing the best that they could know how. Can you imagine? When we do soul searching, practicing self-awareness, we may want to ask a few questions. The first question which people don't like at all, at all, at all, at all, which is a question we cannot avoid is, what was my contribution in the whole of the fiasco? What was my contribution? Yes, so and so really hurt me so much. I feel so offended. But please tell me, remember it takes two to tango. So tell me, isn't it okay to ask this question? Could I have contributed? Could I have avoided this? If I don't, did do this, could this have happened? That is a good question to ask. And of course, also knowing our strength as Christians, some of us break down very easily. Some of us are hypersensitive. Some of us have gone through hardships to the extent that they are so hardened. For them, nothing is big. We are so different. When we do soul searching, practicing self-awareness, we are able to provide several angles with which we look at our situations. Maybe all along, you have been looking at it as the person who hated you. But maybe when you look at it deeply, with a lot of reflection and prayers, you may realize, actually, you may have been the problem. There's nothing as good as when we know ourselves. Maybe you realize that even your language is not so very good. Maybe you may realize that you have been a bit insensitive. You may realize that maybe you have taken so many things for granted. This is important. If this can be done, I am telling you, you would be able to love more than anybody else can ever think. And because this is called the month of love, and we will be able to extend this to the, to the end of the 14th, allow me to stop there. And I'll actually pick it up from there tomorrow morning. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Uh, do have a lovely Valentine's. As I said, if somebody will take you out, please be taken out. If you have nobody to take you out, please do not remain at home wailing. Take yourself out. Treat yourself. Buy yourself a gift. Take yourself out for lunch. Take yourself out for dinner. Buy yourself some flowers. <laughs> and if absolutely there is nobody to hug you, please hug yourself. Then go home. <laughs> go home and celebrate that today was my best Valentine's. I took out my, my Valentine's. And my Valentine's was myself. Take yourself out, my brother. Take yourself out, my sister. You can't remain at home and cry. As a Christian, of course, I have also shown you the better ways of loving. And as I wish you a blessed Valentine's, I know you are receiving gifts, you are sending gifts. I am also here waiting for a gift. Gift. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if you know that it's good to give gifts, even me, give me a gift. Allah, if you don't give me a gift, I'll treat myself also. But then God will see you. <laughs> Is that blackmail? I don't know. But the one thing I know, that I love you so much and God loves you. Thank you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs>